Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another episode of the Absolutely Not Podcast. I'm your host, Heather McMahon. How the hell are you? Hope you're doing well. Hope you're doing fantastic. Um, this is an added bonus episode brought to you by Angie's Boom Chicka Pop. Glad to be here. We are fresh in the studio, and I am here with my dearest friend, Raymond Padilla. Hold on, my phone is making weird noises. Um, and we're here. We're live. We're doing the most. So wanted to just bring you a little extra, a little, you know, uh, uh, what would you say? An amuse-bouche for recording. <laughs> an amuse-bouche, an am- sure. Yes, that's a French term uh-huh. for palate cleanser. Yeah, I know what an amuse-bouche is. No, I'm just letting the other people. Oh, okay. I wasn't talking down to you. I'm letting the other folks who may not know. Parlez-vous an- français? Yeah. No, I almost just choked on my water. Yeah. Um, well, that's for what you get. For having a bad attitude. For having a, not an attitude of gratitude, but an attitude of bullshit. Anyways, um, want to kind of update you on Ray's life. You haven't been on in a second. Ray, what's going on with you? What's happening? Finally loving life in New York. Took a long time. It yeah. Took a long time. I think I found friends. Great. And my apartment's finally coming together. Got rid of chlamydia. Learned how to not catch it. It took a while. Did you, though? <laughs> Did you learn know. how to not catch it? Sort of. I don't believe that for uh, one bit. You know, sort of. Okay, great. So what what is making you really love New York now? I think that I finally feel like I'm, I have a routine and I have a friend group and I have, like, I know what I like. Right. You know what you like. I have, like, my places where I'm a regular. Because you know me, like, in LA, I always went to the same place for lunch every day, Jones on 3rd. You know, and I didn't mm-hmm. have, like, my places where I felt like this is my home. What it, What are your places right now? Um, Ruby Rosa Pizza. Yeah, even great. though they sent me that. It actually wasn't their fault. Remember for Valentine's Day, I ordered the heart-shaped pizza. Oh, that's right. And it showed up, and it was just like a kid had went through Play-Doh and just mushed it all together and left the playroom. Were you able to pick it apart at all to get any? There was like three savable slices. Okay. So I just had to pull them out in my um, single dumb on Valentine's Day and just Mm -hmm. toast them in the oven. That is quite possibly one of the most depressing things I've ever heard in my life. Yeah. And I was like trying not to be the basic bitch who got the heart pizza, but then I did it because I was like, well, I'll have something to post on Instagram. Mm -hmm. And then it showed up in a shit pile. Can I be honest with you? Even as a married woman, I find Valentine's Day insufferable. I don't, it doesn't make me want to love Jeff more. It's another thing that we have to do. It's another, you know, and and our anniversary of technically dating is February 4th because Jeff said it would be easy for him to remember. Why? Why that day? I, he said it because it would be 10 days before Valentine's Day. So it would be easy for him to remember. I'm like, you're a fucking idiot. That means you have to get two gifts. Like, we're just bad at celebrating important dates. Mm-hmm. It's never been our thing. Yeah. But I just, I You've don't. You've missed my birthday a lot. I have. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. I just, I dates, well, you know, I'm, I'm dyslexic with numbers. So I'm going to turn it around. I'm going to think your birthday's in June. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Sure. He has or I have. I haven't. You have. When have I, when have I forgotten your birthday? Like, a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you're saying that I maybe missed your birthday a long time no, ago. No, I don't know. Look at the last and, three wow, years. Somebody's harboring resentment. No, I don't care at all. November 25th. Sixth. Sixth. <laughs> November 26th. And there it is, folks. First of all, it's saved in my phone. Okay, I know your birthday. Yours just saved in mine. Yeah. Yours is coming up. Which is? March 15th. Yes. Mm-hmm. Correct. C- okay. You know what? It's always the people of color that remember the white people's dates. Yeah. We're done. We're done here. And that's the end of the episode. I'm not going to be bullied on my own fucking podcast for mixing up a date. You know what? I'm going to say what I want to say because I bring diversity to the pod. No, let me tell you something right now. There is plenty of diversity because I'm a woman. Uh Second of all. As am I. Women's History Month. Did you know? Second of all, you're not being nice to my handicap. And my handicap is that I'm bad with numbers. And I have a thing that I mix up numbers. So what I'm hearing is you're coming on my podcast to say that you're upset with me and you want to bitch I'm about- actually not upset. I've let it go. I've let but, go. I'm like, that God. Is, that, is a, that is a mental issue I'm just that I have. i facts. Me and Jeff talked about this. I don't, I forgiven, don't forget. You know what I mean? Clearly. You forget everything. Wow, you had to bring my dimension <laughs> to this? And forgive everything. Yeah, I forgive everything and forget everything. So you know what? I am a fucking saint, okay? And I'm surrounded by people who are going to kill me one day. I'm not going to kill her. It's Lent, and so I'm living my truth. Let's talk about your Lent, mm-hmm. okay? And for all the Catholics out there, congratulations. I support you. It's our Good season. You. It's your season. It's your season. Of sacrifice. To, to constantly bring up what you've given up for Lent. Oh, yep, sure is. Every Catholic I know right now is like, ooh, yeah, lip gloss. I can't I can't put any on right now. I gave Nobody's it up for Lent. giving up lip gloss. People are. 
people are giving up makeup that shouldn't. You should continue to beat the face. I don't support that. I don't either. I, I can't look at ugly people. I love any time. I mean, I love a fast. I love any time that you're going, you're giving up something, making yourself uncomfortable and a reflection to the Lord and a reflection to yourself on how you can be a better person. Correct. And your walk with God. That's mm -hmm. a beautiful thing. So let's get into what have you given up for Lent, right? I'm going to reduce my alcohol consumption, not give it up, but significantly reduce. Can I just say something already? Mm -hmm. When Jesus was in the desert for yes. 40 days and 40 nights, Yes. He did not reduce. He was in full, <laughs> full give up mode. So he riddle me this. Why are you only reducing? Because I don't think I'm really struggling with it anymore. <laughs> but I want to cut back. <coughs> Let me get this straight. Uh -huh. You're half-assing Lent. No, I'm not. No, I'm also going to read 20 pages of literature every morning and every evening. That has not <laughs> happened. You've been at my house since well, Ash Wednesday. Ash Wednesday. Yeah. There has been no reading. I didn't I didn't get there until the afternoon. I have my book. It's in my bag. It's in the bag in the car. What is your book? What well, are you reading? Right now I'm reading Sick in the Head okay. by Judd Apatow. Great. Um The Financial Feminist. Uh-huh. Uh, <laughs> Wait. For Women's History Month. Wait, these are books that I made you buy in Mexico. Yeah, and that you said you'd pay me back for and you never did. Have you sent me a Venmo? Have you sent has he sent me a Venmo? <laughs> has he sent me a Venmo? You know what? I just noticed that you're coming in with a, you know, woe is you. No one feels sorry for you right now. No, I mean, they should. Why? Why should they feel? You're attractive. You're smart. Okay. I could say someone's name, but okay, Melanie. Okay, <laughs> Melanie. Okay. You know what I don't have time for? Everybody around me is attractive, smart, educated, talented. Quit the... I don't feel sorry for you. It's the first time she's told me I'm attractive. I tell you you're beautiful every day. Shut the fuck up. We're done. We're, this is the end of the episode. All right, but why are you half as Okay, then what do you think is a proper amount of drinks to give up for Lent? Is Are we like we're not going above a certain number? Yeah, so I think is I'm going to cap myself at like, if I go out, I'm going to cap myself at four. Okay, and what drinks are those? Like four martinis? Or you're like one martini, three vodka sodas? I think it's like one martini, one espresso martini, and then two vodka sodas. Okay, okay. I think that's where we're at. And have you had that conversation with the Lord? On Ash Wednesday, did you get the eating go? I did it before. Okay, you did. And yeah. did you say, Lord, this is what I'm giving yeah, up? Yeah, I said, this is what, I, I want to make myself proud. Okay. I want to make you proud. Mm -hmm. How am I going to... Um, Feel better and not be hungover all the time. I like that. We love any time. And when I thought hungover. I got to reduce, because I really don't. We have cut back on drinking. I have. Yeah. Well, it's because when you work on the weekends every weekend, you don't have time. We to don't drink. have time to drink. We don't. Have I don't time. go to a dinner or whatever. I just want to reduce the, when I'm out. You know. I might get drunk tonight. Oh. I kind of feel it because. Well, I push thing. my flight back. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> um. <laughs> I'm. I feel like getting a little saucy tonight. You know okay. what I mean? I feel like kind of letting loose. I mean, let's let loose. Last time you did it. I mean, and last night you were my chauffeur. I was your chauffeur. Let's talk about something that Ray absolutely did not give up for Lent. And that would be you were, I don't uh, My people have fought so hard to legalize marijuana. And so I'm not giving it up. I didn't say that. Why did you have to bring in my people? At no <laughs> point did I say that you needed but to give it up. what people do you think I'm referring to? What people? Yeah. What people fought to legalize marijuana? I'm going to go with your Mexican side. Mm -hmm. I actually Was think, that accurate? No, I think it's the smart people. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. That was a setup. If you, don't, <laughs> if you have a friend who is half Chinese, half Mexican, and 100% homosexual, they will do this. It's called a setup. <laughs> it's the smart people. Is that how you identify now? Is I'm, well, I've always said I was meant to level smart. Okay, but is that it? You know, King. You know, um, my my boy from oh fuck, what's his name? King Curtis from Wife Swap, and he goes, "I'm the smart one, and y'all are the sorry people." <laughs> so you're telling me you identify as a smart side? Yeah, I do. No, but I also think probably the Mexican side of your family also fought for legalizing marijuana. Possibly. Possibly. I'm just saying. Publicly. They didn't. Privately, hell yeah. Hell yeah, brother. <laughs> Gucci gang. Okay. All right. So. So I had a little, I didn't drink last night. Like, I, walk us through your experience of last night of what you took and. Our friend got us a drink and it's a call the Delta 8 or something. Mm -hmm. And it has uh, THC and CBD in it. And I've never had it. It was like an energy drink almost. And it's like a little Red Bull can and it's an obscene amount 
of THC. It's like 20 mg. No, it was 25 milligrams. Yeah, 20. But I think five were CBD. So oh. it's 20 and then oh, five. five. Yeah, five were CBD, 20. And I usually tap out at five of five gram, five mg of THC. But last five night MG. I went, I probably drank about three fourths of the can. And I didn't feel it at first. So she was like, You, I don't, do you feel it? And I said, I don't feel it. And then I had a little bit more. And and then I couldn't feel my lips. I looked over at one point, you were on the couch and you had a blanket up to your, like right underneath your chin. And I said, Ray, are you good? And you go, my lips are tingling and my jaw hurts from crunching. <laughs> we had the crunchiest salad I've ever we, eaten. Okay. And we're all I trying was to be healthy. so hungry Yeah, that I was, I you know, I had three servings of crunchy freaking salad. It was a very crunchy salad. And then I was, you know, feeling the... Juju. Yeah. And my whole jaw was hurting. My lips were tingling. My arms were tingling. And it was honestly though, it was nice because she had that your friend was running the AC and then I got to your mom's house and she sweated me out. She sweated me out. I don't know what to do. It, we were having a hot spell right now in Atlanta and I feel bad for anybody who stays in my house because my mom will go behind you, behind your back and turn the thermostat up to 78. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've told you I've walked into her wing of the house and Delta has been sitting there smoking a cigarette, fanning herself like mm -hmm. it's too fucking hot. Yeah, what is going on? She's taking a lap in the She'll toilet leave, just to cool down. She will leave her room on 82 in the summer. No. And I'm like, no. And I'll go. And, and I have all the Nest stuff on my phone. I can fix it. Just yeah, but text she me wakes next up time. in the middle of the night and turns it up yeah like a ghost because i like turn an it, air conditioning i turn ghost. it down right before i go to bed but then i i hear pitter patter in the middle of the night and i know it's her creeping down listen she's out of control okay i've already called a couple homes to see if they have room for her and they said she's not ready <laughs> <laughs> we love robin robin I'm, I'm just joking around with you okay but here's the thing so you're high as a kite on this drink i'm the dd last night yeah so i'm driving home dead sober yes from our crunchy salad date with our friend mary oh i, I said her name again <laughs> From our crunchy salad date with our friend. Oh, our girlfriend. Me. Our girlfriend. So, that was a really fucking crunchy salad. And our friend who's listening right now, it was just, it was too crunchy. Uh -huh. It needed one soft place to land. I appreciate making the meal. Yeah. We're yeah. very grateful that she made us a salad, but you can't go I too hard. I've so many dental issues. I can't eat something that crunchy. <laughs> you know? Again, a pillar of the crown community. Mm -hmm. Okay, so anyways, we're driving home, and I was like, all right, raise high. Let's put on some vibes. Let's put on some chill vibes. Yeah. I was like, I at least want to like vicariously live through you. So at first, we put on Incubus. Yeah, and it wasn't working for me. But if you haven't listened to Incubus in a long time, solid, solid stoner totally, moment. Yes, 100%. I could feel the mood, but I just... <clears throat> I just didn't have the connection to them like you did as a kid. Yeah, I remember really, you're older than I. I am. I am older. I am a pillar of the elderly community. Elderly uh, white lady. Yeah, elder millennial. Actually, I'm not even an elder millennial. I'm a. I think <clears throat> you're like right in the middle. I think I am too. Yeah. So we put on Incubus that wasn't tickling Ray's taint. So then I put on the Honey album, or was it Honey? A butterfly, a butterfly album. Butterfly album for Mariah Carey does not get the credit it deserves. It is hands down one of the best albums you've ever heard. So I put on one of my favorite songs. Okay, uh -huh. it's called Breakdown. All right, and it starts. It's Bone Thugs and Harmonies. Two guys, Crazy Bone. And what was it? Not lazy Bone? No, it was Wishbone. Wishbone and Crazy Bone. And they're yeah. like, break, break down. Instead of breaking me on down every day, every day. <laughs> and we pray and we pray. <laughs> so I'm in the zone. You know it. Tina remembers okay, it. Okay, so it's Busy Bone, Wishbone. Busy Bone? Lazy Bone, Crazy Bone, and Fleshed Bone. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> are Bone Thugs and Harmony collectively. Bone Thugs and Harmony are, hold on, let me... T Tina, send this to my my text so I can see it right now on my computer. Well, we could only see the two that were on the navigation. Yes, I think it was only on the song. I think it was, it was only featuring Crazy Bone and Wishbone. Wishbone. Mm -hmm. So I'm just over there, like honestly acting stone, but I'm not high. Just going no. break, break down instead of breaking me on down every day, every day, and we pray and we pray. And Ray's like, oh, my God, we should come up with bone names. And you said you wanted yours to be. I said, oh, if we had a bone name, we'd be Silly Bone. And I realized you were trying to say Funny Bone. <laughs> <laughs> I was on planet Mars yeah. from the drink. Yeah. So I said, now, our new nicknames now, Ray Silly Bone, I'm Funny Bone. Tina, gonna, what is drop, Tina? Tina's gonna... in the office right now. You can't see her. But what Tina, What what is Tina's new name? Mm. Okay, let's Loose see. bones, arthritic bones. No. <laughs> Baby bird bones. Baby bird bones. bones. That might be Robin's. Yeah. Your sure. bones aren't that small. Mm -mm. 
No, I mean, I'm not saying you have big bones, but you're not. Robin really. She big might hair. be like tough bones. Ooh, ooh, yeah. She's um, like break your bones. Yeah, break ooh, your bones. Break your bones. <laughs> Tina Tompkins is break your bones, Tompkins. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We've been calling Tina the um, executioner because mm -hmm. if there's anything that you need to get done or anybody you need to physically intimidate, we send Tina. She's yeah. like the debt collector. Yeah, correct. Loan shark. Loan shark. She's our dog and Beth. Can I under Can I tell you? I don't fully understand loan sharks. So what do the, they do? They go and collect the they go and collect the money from people that have borrowed money to pay a debt. So basically, like say your your husband who has a crippling gambling addiction, he does not borrows money to pay off his debts for betting on Penn State, even no, though they're losers. This is completely wrong. No, a loan shark is a person who offers loans at an extremely high interest. Yes, and but, then they have to collect the money. No, they're not collecting it. No, no, no. A loan shark is just the person who's out there oh, sharking out the loans. It's people who can't borrow money at a normal rate because they're yes crippling gambling addicts. Yes, and then I'm sure they have somebody else that's going out. They have muscle. They have muscle. And that's yeah. who we'd send. We'd send break your bones Tina in mm -hmm. to do it. And yeah. Tina would be knocking on the door like, every day, every, every day, day, you better pay, better pay. Silly bone. <laughs> Funny bone. Me, me at a crossroads. Me, me at a crossroads. That's a solid song. Uh -huh. If you haven't gone back and listened to Butterfly in a while, you need to. Do yourself a favor. Do yourself a freaking favor. Do yourself a favor. So when we got home, we started watching this Alec Murdoch case. Oh, and also we were we were dying laughing because we were listening to Mace rap on one of the songs. And mm. he, his line was, Mariah, you on fire. And so I said, Ray, you're amazing. You know, it's Raymond. Oh, Raymond, you're amazing. Heather, the no one better. <laughs> and so Ray is so high, he can't feel his face. I'm dead sober driving the Audi. Just like, break, break down. I yep. mean, honestly, that is a good evening for me. We, yeah. had, we went and saw friends. Yep. We ate a crunchy salad. Yeah. You got high. Mm -hmm. I didn't. And we, we listen to uh, Mariah Carey on the way out. And that's my dream. You tell me a better Wednesday. I dare you. I, I can't think <gasps> of one. I, I, I can't think of one either. It was Thursday, though. Whatever. <laughs> oh, it's all running together. Anyways, Ray, uh, we're going to get into questions in a second. I went onto the Instagrams because people love a QA, and a and I feel like this is a good time to just hit the Q&A. Yeah, hit the Q&A. For this bonus episode. But what else is going on in your life right now it, with the Lint? So you're giving up, you're, you're restricting the drinks. Yeah, I'm, I think I'm going to try and cut all dairy. Because I really should, I'm not supposed to have it. It makes me sick. But, okay. you know, we've been hitting the, the dessert too hard. But we had vegan ice cream last night. We did have vegan ice cream yes. and vegan brownies. Shout yeah. out to Whole Foods. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm going to cut, try and cut the dairy. So we got to quit with the pasta and all that jazz. Okay. That's then, your journey, not mine. Mm -hmm. But yeah. Uh -huh. Well, you could probably do it because you're eczema. I haven't had an eczema flare up in a while. And I just really, you know, I, it's been very dormant and low key. I think it's because I got my new daughter macaroni and my stress has been low. Okay. Yeah, she's the joy you needed. I am a pillar of the eczema community, but so far I've been good. Can I be honest with you? This is a good time for me. Whenever I go to the beach and I sit in salt water for a week, it clears up it and clears I'm good. It clears you up. Okay. Yeah, winter's not great, but this, I got to so tell you. your body's clear, but your head is messed up. Always been messed up. Mm -hmm. Break, break down. That is literally your theme song now because you're always on the verge of a breakdown. Uh, yes. I won't argue that. Mm -hmm. I am always on a verge on a breakdown because, and I've said this before, Attitude of gratitude, richly blessed. But there's just a million different irons in the fire. Mm -hmm. It's not like there's just, I just podcast. Yeah. I just tour. There's 65 different things that I'm trying to do so I can have. Make a list. I make, the list is fucking here. I can't show people the list. And then check the list. I and check the list. cross things off. First of all, I communicate. I am communicating. The five pillars of Raymond Padilla, Padilla's school of hard knocks. I have been executing. <laughs> How's I, that calendar? The calendar's great. The last didn't two podcast episodes ago, you were literally recording and said, "Oh shoot, I'm missing a meeting." I was missing a meeting. Uh huh. So I then the calendar, we still have some work to do. Because you know what, I had to get a new fucking phone because my old phone was so bootleg, it wasn't connected to the calendar. And you know who fucking executed it? Um, break your bones, Tina, over here. Uh -huh. Got my Google Calendar fixed. I'm just saying, I'm just saying. You're coming at me hard with the Lent, and I'm just telling you there's rooms for improvement. I'm not saying that I don't have places to improve, Raymond. Okay? I'm going to take back the Raymond. You're amazing. <laughs> it's about to be like, Raymond, I fucking want to kill you. <laughs> I'm not saying that. What I, I don't even know what I was saying. I don't either. What are you going to do for Lent? I don't, I'm not Catholic. But you could, you know, use a time of reflection. To make things better. 
<laughs> okay. You should go into the desert for 40 days and see how you come out. You know, I'll tell you right fucking now. If I went into the desert for 40 days, you know how I'd come out? Thin, tan, fun, refreshed. Well, then maybe that's what you need. Go. Go I with don't, God. Go on your journey. Go get refreshed. Go get tan. Nobody's stopping you. I don't have 40 days to take off. You want to know why? Because I got to go on the fucking road and drag your ass around. Okay? I'm there for moral support. Uh, <laughs> don't tell me there's no business like show business break break down show business is no business you know what i don't want to fucking hear it i my friend the other day said everybody should do a stint in rehab for whatever like like a yeah, deep therapy your mental mental and, health or whatever and i said i would love 30 days i'd love 30 days to just sit at a facility and talk about things and relax and kick my feet up and have other people ask me how are you but i don't get that because i'm out there given well maybe we could do one of those things where we like send you away but then we have someone else be you like paul mccartney you know what i mean like a hologram oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> guys how disappointed would you be if you came to the comeback door and it was just a hologram <laughs> and it was like i was it's like coachella and um yeah tubac tubac it was actually not disappointing that was incredible i was there high as a kite but it was incredible no i like being present as our friend who gave us served us a crunchy salad the other day, she said her rule in her house is what? Be pleasant and present. And that's what I'm all about. Okay, let's get back to what I should give up for <clears throat> Lent as a, I guess, Presbyterian. I don't actually really know what I am. I'm a quarter Jewish, non-denominational Christian. I okay. went to a Church of Christ school. That was fucking insane. But I love the Lord. I just love the Lord. That is clear. I've never doubted your love of the Lord. I feel connected, but I don't, I'm not in a certain oh, denomination. You, you know what you're giving up. We already decided. Remember the spiraling on TikTok? Oh, yes. I am only going on TikTok to post or maybe respond to comments. I'm not allowed to look at any other person's Doomsday. TikTok. Doomsday. It's too doom and gloom. I'm not. I got in a dark spot for a second. I'm not allowed to look at any TikTok. I am giving that up in the sense of it was bringing a negative dark cloud over me. Yeah, it was making you cuckoo ca Three and the Every morning. day, every day, we TikTok break, every break day. Break, break down. Break, instead of break me on down. God, Bone Thugs and Harmony needs to come back. I know. Uh, we need, that's that's the comeback tour I need. You know what else I could probably give up for Lent? <clears throat> let's think, let's think. I, there's organi organizational things that I could give up. Like, I'm not allowed to put anything on the floor. It has to go into the bin. It has to be put up. Yeah. Like, I, like floor space, I should not be able to, I should give up for Lent. Okay. Like, at no point am I allowed to, I have a bench, a very nice velvet bench at the end of my bed. And everyone just puts everything on Everybody it. puts everything on the bench. It should be like, I, I'm giving up the bench for Lent. You have to put that shit away. Away. I made a rule now because I'm obviously we're on the road all the time and I'm so grateful. But I made a rule if I'm home longer than three days, the suitcase has to go away within 24 hours. Because if I leave the yeah. suitcase out, then I feel like I'm never at my house and then I feel like I'm just at a hotel. Uh -huh. So my rule is if I'm home longer than 72 hours, my suitcase has to be put away within 24. So I, as soon as I walk in the door, unload everything in my suitcase. But the suitcases just go back into the guest bedroom where I just repack. Yeah. So I'm in a cons. I mean, I'm usually, this is the first week. Well, you're a home. rich white woman and I live in a shoebox in New York so it's all one room I have to put away the suitcase <laughs> I'm dead inside cause he belittles all my hard work <clears throat> I remember the other day I was giving you a hard time about the size of your house and I incorrectly gave you less square footage and I corrected you and you corrected you're like it's actually 2,000 more than that and I was like yeah. okay yeah if you're gonna try and break me down mm -hmm. steady steady breaking me on down mm -hmm. you better get the square footage of my house right uh -huh. which is big which is also Robin's house okay <laughs> So let's be honest. Um, listen, going to get into the questions real quick. As always, though, you know you can call into the hotline 800-213-7503. Want to hear maybe what are you giving up for Lent? I know this is a bonus episode, but what are we giving up? What's an absolutely not an absolutely Well, then now the thing is, too, you don't have to give up something. You could do something like a charity thing or you could oh, like. Oh, that's nice. That's why, the, that's why I'm reading, right? So like I'm trying to improve myself by reading 20 pages a day. Can I tell you, I, I said at the beginning of the year I was going to start reading more and I got a bunch of books, but then I realized. I have these fancy lamps on my bedside table. Oh, yeah. They don't get, give off good light. So yeah, like, so you need to, the book light. I told you I, we need to get the book light. I need to get the book light. I'll get you that as a birthday gift. And what do you do? Clip it onto the book? Yeah, you just clip it on like a like a chip clip, and then it has like a little oh, I, I squiggle light. I would love that. Yeah, and then it also works as a bookmark, because then when you clip the page, then that's the last page you were on. Oh, can you travel with the book light? Yes, it's this big. Okay. I'm it's a, like. So it's, no excuses to not no, be reading. it's like smaller than a cigarette case. Ooh. 
I could really go for a cigarette right now. Hey, Amen. You know, I bet Bone Thugs and Harmony smoked a lot of cigs to keep that baritone, oh, that yeah. level of oh, voice. Yeah. That's kind of like when I when I rip them. That's yeah. the, the best part about it. I love ripping them. Speaking of ripping them, where are we going on vacation this summer? Are we going to Europe? Are we going back? Well, are we going to, September? We're going to go to. Oh, we're going to hey! Go to, if anybody's listening to this, we have two things that we need to get off our chest real quick. We were not invited back to the Masters, and I granted our friends who gave us the tickets have other more important people to give tickets to yeah. this year. We're very grateful for that opportunity. Yeah. But I would like to say to the Masters golf tournament in general, I gave you all a lot of press and really tore it up for you, and we really made, promoted it. Really promoted it, and I would really appreciate some. Re- return tickets. Thank you. Thank you. And if anybody has a connection to the Ryder Cup, we're trying to go to Italy in September for the Ryder Cup this fall. So if we're trying to take the comeback tour to Europe, and we would really appreciate if anybody had tickets. Yeah, to we want like a quick hiatus for the Ryder Cup and Fat Camp in Florence. Exactly. Oh, that's our plan. So mm-hmm. we're going to go to the golf tournament. We're going to eat our way through Italy for like a week, and then we're going to go to what is it? Well, I don't want to name it because we, we can't call it that. But we're going to oh. go to the retreat where they like eat vegan Italian food for a week and we work out for eight days. Yes. So I already lose weight when I go to Italy. And then on top of that, we're going to go to like a delicious, you know, they're still going to have pasta there. Oh yeah. It's handmade every day. Fuck yes. But it's going to be like so healthy and so delicious. It's like our version of fat. And what are we doing? Hiking through Tuscany? Yeah. Can we drink? Ooh. I don't know. Maybe the like organic wine they might let yes. us drink. They're yeah, Italians. I mean, they're gonna, not going to make us give up like caffeine. Also, we're going to have to have like a hundred euro bill and we'll sneak it to the. Yeah, the we're st- fine. You know, we know how to get wine. Scommers. We know how to scom. Yeah, we're going to scom. You send our asses to fat camp, we'll scom. <laughs> One of my favorite movies of all time, Heavyweights. You know? uh, oh my God, I want to remake that. Everyone's always like, what movie do you want to remake? Heavyweights. Heavyweights. With adults. I think they made it into a musical. Tina, did they make it into a musical? They were going to. But we weren't available to do it. So we, that's why it got canceled. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just like we're canceling lunch due to lack of hustle. They apparently also canceled that. We gotta do a we gotta do a little research on that. Well, yeah. I'd love to produce it and bring it back. So reach out. Anywho, okay. Uh we're gonna get into the questions right now that you guys sent via Instagram because we're gonna just we're gonna dial into this. Yeah, you know? Let's go for it. So we're gonna go through a couple of these. And <clears throat> these are Somebody, first question out the gate is sitting versus standing wiping or thoughts on bidets. So do you sit, do you wipe standing? Who the fuck wipes standing? I think I've only ever, I've never done that. Unless we've like had to squat because we're not sitting on the toilet. And I'm a hover. Yeah. You know, peeing or pooping, either or, I'm going to hover. Yeah. Who stands to wipe? Not I. Is that, I mean, am I crazy? I think I'm just too morbidly obese to do that. Um, or thoughts on bidets. Listen, I, I'm love very. A bidet. We love a bidet. We love Pro a fresh bidet. tush. You know, I would prefer more bidets in my house. I wish house. I had a, could use it every day. Me too. Absolutely. Because mm-hmm. you know what? The one thing that the Europeans get right is they have a fresh tush all the time. It's clean, and we're doing it wrong. Amen. Um, okay, nicest celeb you met back in WeHo when we you and I used to work at Soul Cycle. We've gotten this question a lot too. How do we meet? If you guys are new here, Ray and I met working the front desk at the Soul Cycle gym. Nicest celeb. One of them was uh, Kelly Rowland to me and Charlize, the I, nicest. I was about to say, Charlize Theron, if you ever see this, truly one of the nicest celebrities who ever came into Soul Cycle West Hollywood, ever, period. Great gal. We love you. I hope to work with you one day. Amen. Solid A plus human being. Amen. Um, who else was great? That was it. Honestly, <laughs> we waited on everybody in Hollywood. 99% of you can lick my all- clit. <laughs> he said it. I didn't. Ninety nine percent of the people that I waited on at Soul Cycle West Hollywood can keep walking because mm-hmm. I'm gonna pretend when I'm on the Emmys red carpet I don't know you. But Charlize Theron, nicest lady in the biz. Yeah, for sure. Miss seeing you. Mm-hmm. Call me. <laughs> also, I didn't meet this person at Soul Cycle. Oh, actually, I did meet them at Soul Cycle. Julia Roberts was iconic. Held my hand. Thanked me. Used the word cooch. Okay, this is a great question. If you and Ray were to have a girl group slash band, what would the name be? Oh, this is actually perfect because we were just talking about silly bone and funny bone. Uh-huh. But if we had a girl band, well, maybe we do a play off Bone Thugs and Harmony. Maybe it's not Bone Thugs. Maybe it's Bone Hugs. Uh, no, our girl group. Let's think about it. Yeah, girl <clears> group. <throat> let's think about it. Um, well, you're blonde right now, yeah. so we could do a play on something about blonde. You know, big tits. It could be like TNA, like tits yeah. and ass. Yeah, tits and ass. BTA. Yeah. BT, instead of BTS. Yes. BTA. Blonde tits ass. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very good at branding and marketing. Uh-huh. Like, honestly, if comedy doesn't work out, I'm going to go work for a big ad agency or start my own because I'm an entrepreneur. Correct. But I could do that. I could see the BTA. Yeah. 
instead of BTS. What if it's like little big women? Little big women. LBW. LBW. Lil Big, big women. women. Uh-huh. Lil Big Women. I kind of like that, too. You know? And then, like, each of us has, like, spice. Like, you're a little... I'm a little chicken. Yeah. No, like, you're like... you're like. I'm a little turmeric. <laughs> or, oh, I'm, like, everything bagel seasoning. I'm a little everything bagel seasoning. Okay? Or we could just call ourselves bacon, egg, and cheese. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Bacon. Yeah. Bacon, egg, and cheese. Bacon, egg, and cheese. That's also a solid one. Mm-hmm. Who's the pork, though? Um... Who is a pork? I'll tell you. I am. I'm the bacon. I'm the middle. Raymond is a pillar of many communities, but Heather, what community are you a pillar of? I am a pillar of the acid reflux, eczema. Infertile. Infertile. (laughs) Every time you say it, (laughs) it's so much harder. (laughs) It's okay if I say it, but when you say it, and I now understand when people like, you know, if somebody else says something mean to you, Uh but wow, when you say infertile, you always like to... Drive that message home. No, I just because we have so many calls every week about like whether or not you're pregnant, and I'm like, remember you <laughs> lack fertility. <laughs> like we don't need to spiral once a week about whether or not you're pregnant every time you get sprayed. Like that is true. You, you know, I'm like, yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. Hey, listen. Uh, also, a member of the pillar of the worry wart co- committee, <laughs> the community committee. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Uh, what uh, what other things? Working woman community, working entrepreneur, yeah. um, CEO community. No, that's the name of our girl group. Oh, CEO, that's good. That's good. CEO, uh-huh. CEO, and one of our first songs is going to be like um, driving your best friend high. You know what I mean? Like the, <laughs> the <laughs> Vanessa yeah. Carlton, making my way downtown. downtown, driving slow. He's so high, he feels like he's in Mars. <laughs> and then I'm just in the back going every day, every day. And we pray and we pray. Yeah. Hell yeah. Uh Also, shout out to Vanessa Carlton. I know. I found out she followed me on Instagram and I almost threw my phone. I was like, are you fucking kidding me? So Vanessa Carlton, if you ever listen to this, just want you to know, we would love for you to join our girl group band. It's called She E. I mean, produce our first track. Oh my God, Vanessa Carlton, please produce Produce our our first track. track. Yeah. Okay. Um, Let me go through some of these. Um, Is Ray? Oh, Ray, are you single? I am, unfortunately. Okay, and, and maybe let's just put it this back out there. But uh, uh, I feel like I'm actually making progress finally. Okay. I feel like because now I have friends that I meet, and I'm not just like a creepy guy at a bar drinking alone. You know, I'm not, like it's fine. I'm like meeting people through friends. So I feel good about it, and I also feel like I don't know why. I just have a good feeling about it this year. I have a I great really feeling do. about it for you. Yeah. Your mom today was like, move down to Atlanta, and I go, Robin, I'm so close to finding a husband, yeah. my first husband. Yeah. Uh, I can't leave New York yet. And then so I feel good. So I am single. And what, uh, is, what does Robin think you're going to do? You're going to move down to Atlanta and just hit the bars with her? Yeah, she thinks I'm just going to be like her old gay friend. You she know what I mean? She's a gay icon, though. Yeah, she, I mean, she is. But I, <laughs> if I had already lived a life, if, I, if yeah. my first two husbands had already died, yeah. then I would, you know, be your, me and your mom would be widows together. You're right. You're absolutely you know? right. Both living off our husband's money. I do see a point in time where I'm dead, but you and Robin are still thriving. thriving. And you guys are on a gay cruise. I'm oh, just saying. I'm, oh, my God. Well, we're going to do the cruise. The comedy oh, cruise. We're, we about- we're trying to do a comedy cruise. We can't talk about it. But yeah, we're trying to make it happen. Yeah. Hey, first screen names. Great question by Danny. Mine was Surf Naked 365 because it, it was a it, it, d- double entendre, a little innuendo, if you will. Surfing. Yeah. So I went to surf camp. Yeah. And then I also thought it'd be funny like I was surfing the web naked, which yeah. actually when you think about it, fucking creepy. Pedophile. Yeah, I, but I wasn't. I was actually well, You were going to get pedophiled. I didn't get to have a screen name. My dad didn't let me have AIM. He was a helicopter parent. Really? So I feel like I missed out. I mean, I like would go to friends' houses and we would chat on there. So I learned all the lingo. Like, what was it? Like, Paul. Pierre and his watching. Yeah. Yeah. Uh huh. My first screen name was Serve Naked 365. Th- 364. Serve Naked 364. Mm-hmm. I basically was already in Bone Thugs and Harmony. Mm-hmm. Serve Naked 3. Surf Naked 364. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because I went to surf camp, so you know, right, Blue right. Crush was a real, Blue Crush was a real influence on my life. That's core a, memory, yeah, core memory. Mm-hmm. Um, did you really turn Ray gay? No. What does that even mean? Why? How did I turn him gay? And the lazy because he's so disgusted by my body. Maybe. No. No, I'm born this way, Lady Gaga. Oh, that's that's what turned you gay? No, that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and she's an ally, folks. I, I am. Mm-hmm. I am. Mm-hmm. 
Um, somebody said, did you see the rig- Rigatoni statue at the Philly show? Yes, I did see the statue. It was amazing. Y'all tag me in it. You never tag me in these things in like a hard post. If it's in a story, it goes away too quickly. But if you tag me in it, I can see it and I can follow you back. Somebody just said, when are you coming to Austin? Where, where you been, beach? We went for a week. We were there for a week. We three, had three shows. shows. We had three shows at the Paramount Theater. Mm-hmm. Oh, no, maybe they mean Australia. <gasps> oh. Oz. Ozzy. We are trying to come Shrimp to- on the barbie. A sandwich. We're trying to come to Dude. Australia. Australia. We're trying to go. <laughs> You're just trying to say yeah, what yeah, I'm I, saying. I can't do it. I can't do the Australian accent. That's okay, though. Is That's it? A, I mean, it's okay. You need to be a pillar of the Australian um, community. Oh, I will. Watch me work. All right. Um, why are your arms so skinny and why? Oh, the great question. Why are your arms so skinny and why is Raymond's skin so flawless? Wow. We love the questions that build us up and make us feel like better people. Mm-hmm. Prettier people. Prettier people. It's genetics. I don't even think I have very thin arms. I just have very thin wrists. So everything, that's why if you notice, I don't wear bracelets. Mm-hmm. You're never going to see me wearing a bracelet. I took mine off today because it felt like. Yeah, because it feels like it cut you off. Mm-hmm. Hey, a little style tip and a photo tip. Everybody wears, you know when everyone wears this giant like choker Oh, the bangles. Brace, the bangle brace. Now I'll wear a bangle if it's loose because yeah. it'll slide up and yeah. down the arm. Yeah. But I'm never wearing like a, a cuff. I'm, you'll never yeah. see me in a gold cuff. I did see a meme the other day that was like, more men in the United States wear bracelets than eat stew. <laughs> and that really messed me up because I love stew. And Who's, not enough people make stew. The only stew that I know is beef stew. Yeah, beef stew. Brunswick stew. Yeah, stew. In a winter night, meat and stew. Yeah, but what restaurants? The problem is our food scene's gotten too elevated. You know, w- w- at what point are we going in? Well, I'm bringing back stew. That's going to be my fast food restaurant. That's how I'm going to get a billion dollars. A stew drive through. Drive through and get some stew. Drive through and get some freaking stew. Um, okay, I'm, I'm going through these. I'm going through these. Um, I probably right. should have went through these before. I know we should have, but I like being in the moment. I like being in the moment. Um, <laughs> um, you get a free pass. Who would you sleep? Oh, you get a free pass. This person needs to come to the con. Some of these questions, the dumbest fucking questions, uh-huh. because people have not been out on the tour yet. I could answer 99% of these. If you go to heatherontour.com and get your tickets to the comeback tour, 90% of y'all need to wake the fuck up and come to a show. Ooh, fuck, Mary kill, chicken tender, mozzarella sticks, or pizza. <sighs> That's a tough one. I'll tell you, I know this right out, right out the gate. Mm-hmm. I'm going to marry pizza. Because I, I, you could eat that forever. You could the diversity on pizza is fantastic. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna kill mozzarella sticks, and here's why: I choke on them every time. Choking hazard, and I have a little PTSD from the last time I ate a mozzarella stick at Bernie's in New York, uh-huh. and the cheese got lodged down my throat. Uh-huh. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna kill mozzarella sticks, fuck a pizza, or no, sorry, marry a pizza, and I'm gonna fuck a chicken tender with honey mustard and ranch. I think I gotta kill tender. Really. Yeah, because it's a little rough going up. You know, yeah. mozzarella stick, you can slip right there. That is Still true. marrying pizza. But here's the thing. If you're putting a mozzarella stick in your butt and you try and pull that out, it's going to get stuck Who too. says I'm pulling it out? Ooh. 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 Leaving it in for a long time. <laughs> and the mozzarella stick community is absolutely going to reach Disgusted. out to us. Disgusted. <laughs> yeah. What do we fight about the most? Oppression. Oh, God. <laughs> that every day, Ray likes to remind me that he is oppressed. He's thriving. He's thriving. Says the oppressor. I'm not the oppressor. Okay, and we fight about oppression the most? We fight about his oppression. (laughs) And then the doom and gloom. Yeah. That's it. And But you know what? I I mentioned- You're always trying to rain on my parade, Mr. Arnstein. I'm not. Good good musical reference from Funny Girl. Uh Uh-huh. Um... Will Ray ever take the MTA? And that is the transit system. That's a subway in New York. Uh, I can't and I shan't. Why not? I've worked too hard to go down underground. Okay. And (laughs) put that on a (laughs) t-shirt. Best hangover remedies. That's a great question. Um, Sushi. Yes. It's because you need the soy. Can I tell you, every time I'm hungover, I crave sushi the next day. Sushi. I need sushi. I need some sort of like hydration. Yeah. The like stick or whatever you put in the water. Yep. I need that, a Mexican Coke, a sushi, and then like a cold eye thing. Yeah, I agree. A lot of face and masks. A lot of air conditioning. A lot of air conditioning. And I need a nap. It does not matter. If I have to be hungover all day, then I just have to start drinking again. But if I can get a two hour nap in and a we're shower, good. I'm we're, good. We're ready to roll. And can I tell you, I've been doing this thing at the end of my showers where I, I'll do like the Wim Hop thing. Oh, the cold. I did today. I did it today. I've been zip zap zopping. Mm-hmm. Okay. 
Favorite trip you've gone on together? Well, you know, I feel like the favorite trip has yet to happen. Oh, yeah. We've been on a lot of We still have a lot of potential. We do. A lot lot of of potential. potential. But I mean, your wedding was incredible, but that was like 100 other people. Some of them I wouldn't have invited, but that was your guest list, not mine. Mm -hmm. They know who they are. (laughs) Wait, first of all, another threat. Every time Ray comes on the podcast, it's a threat. Who are you actually beefing with? No one. Nobody, but there are some people I would have cut. Uh, okay, I will write it down. Also, and- can I see the freaking video? You've been promising me for two months I get to see the wedding video. We still haven't seen the wedding video. All right, remind me when we're at home and I'll cue it I'm up. I'm not going back to your house, bitch. I'm going to Tina's. We're hitting the town. Uh, you know what? I should just kill myself at this <laughs> point. Um, okay, this is a, po- a question we've gotten a lot. What, were you immediate friends when you met or did it take a while? Ray did not like me the first day we met and I cornered him. That is not true. I didn't dislike you. I, you were just. You were a fucking cunt. Okay, but you were also in a group of white women who did not work and left the woman of color to do everything that night. And that is what happened and that is the truth and I will stand by that and when I go up to the pearly gates, Lord Jesus Christ himself, I will say, you were right, you need to call out those girls. They were snacking in the back, chit-chatting, gossiping like the pink ladies and you were over there working the mechanic shop all by your lonesome. First of all, you weren't working the mechanic shop. I was cleaning all the rooms. You sat at the front desk and just- Typed up my report. You didn't get up once from the desk. So actually the lazy- I went no, into the room. No, I went the into the room. Person, so I went into the, the room. The laziest person at SoulCycle I used to do the. You. I used to do the weights after at night. Would you have to switch them all out? Who else do you think helped you with the weights, Ray? I don't remember. It wasn't you by I yourself. Don't, I don't remember. Shut the fuck up. We didn't, we didn't dislike, we disliked each other, I think, for maybe six hours. Oh my god, it's exhausting. Ooh, <laughs> best face masks and skincare hacks. Well, it's okay. You can't give that advice to everyone because everyone has different skin. Great so point. what I do for my skin and what Heather does for hers, it's completely different. She has old lady white skin. I have beautiful, stunning Asian Mexican woman skin. Like it's two different <laughs> skins, and so you just have to know that there's a difference. So Can for me, uh-huh. my biggest thing as a man to keep my face from drying out. I don't shave that often because I don't like to shave. Okay. And two, I only shave at night because you need your pores to be open when you shave. People always comment on my face after I've shaved because it's like, oh my God, you, what have you done? I'm like, I literally shaved, steamed, and washed my face. Uh, okay. Uh, first of all, the fact that you came in with old lady white face <laughs> is probably one of the most offensive things I've ever heard in my life. But the quickness? No, no. You think, skill. You, you think you're sharp. It's just mean. Second of all, um, <laughs> the number one comment that I usually get when people meet me in person is, wow, you're really pretty and your skin's great. So you want to know what- I my- didn't say you weren't. I didn't say it wasn't. No, you said old lady. You, you were about to say crepey. I felt like you were teetering <laughs> on- You were going to say crepey. You were going to say crepey and I don't have crepey skin. I was not going to say that. Now you're projecting. Uh, shut up. First of all- Gaslighting. I'm being gaslit. I was never going to- You I was never going to say you gas- crepey. Let me. I was never going to say that. Okay, it was on the tip of your tongue. Okay, two, two different sets of genetics. I have great genetics. I didn't say you didn't. I've never had eczema on my face. I only get it. Nor have I. I don't have eczema in general. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I hate him so much. Oh, even better thing we'll argue about. Who gives a better BJ? I'm going to say you do. Well, I give a great BJ, but I'm tired. See, I have acid a lot now because I'm not like with this, like the, you know, when you're meeting a stranger, unless he's super hot, you're half assing it. Cause you're like, I don't want to do this and I don't want them to make me keep doing it. Mm-hmm. And nobody wants to do it. And I'm, you know, if I thought, if I was doing it to somebody I wanted to do it. But I would say probably. It would be, it would be like a fat kid whipping through a whole box of popsicle sticks. Yeah, you know yeah, what yeah, I mean? Yeah, We'd yeah. be going to town. Mm-hmm. Just syrup on my face. Yeah, absolutely. I'm glad you brought that <laughs> analogy up. Yep. <laughs> Um, I would say that I'm good at, I've never had a complaint on a BJ. Never once. I've never once had a complaint on a BJ. I think you've given more than I have. Oh, I, I probably have. Yeah. That's what people don't realize. I was a, I mean, I, I've dated. That's, I'm just saying, but also you're married, like, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? I just, and I don't, I'm not like that kind of girl. I remember I'm Catholic Lent. I, <laughs> you've given up, are you also giving up BJs for Lent? Only to strangers. Okay, <laughs> there we go. And this is, uh, we're going to wrap this up, but Lisa Frank or Vera Bradley? I'm going Lisa Frank I, all the way. Absolutely. Lisa Frank is so much gayer. I saw the saddest thing. It was the, le- it was the closed, shut down, like boarded up, Lisa Frank old factory and offices and I think somewhere in like Tucson, Arizona. Oh, we should buy it up and we see what stickers it. are left and what pencils and notebooks. With dolphins, glitter oh, dolphins oh all over Oh my God, it. love it. Yeah, Lisa Frank went hands down. Okay, and this I think is a great question to end on. Ultimate dessert, no budget. Ooh. A hooker. 
You know what I mean? An ultimate dessert. I mean, ultimate dessert. A sex worker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Doing caviar off of a male yeah. model's penis. Yeah. Ultimate dessert, though, for me, if I'm really going to get into it, no budget. I love that there's no budget. Uh-huh, no budget. It would be some sort of hot fudge sundae. Correct. You know what I mean? Yes. Shaved, maybe chocolate truffles on top. Mm-hmm. Correct. And then a gigolo afterwards. Yeah. And that's what bring that's what would bring me joy. Yeah, I want him to come on my face, and then I'll let the ice cream clean it off. Why do you want him to come on your face? I don't know. It just seems like a good idea. You know, I don't like having my face come on. Yeah, I mean, who doesn't love a facial? I'm always like, Jeff, pull out, come on my dad's. <laughs> you know. I mean, yeah. I don't know. I don't. I mean, I don't love it, but it's just like I also don't want to like have the sex after eating a big dairy. You know what I mean? I mm-hmm. want. I want the Sunday first. You want the Sunday first? Yeah, and then we'll work off the Sunday after. Okay, so now you're swapping it up. Mm-hmm. Now you want to eat the Sunday first, and then the cherry on top is come on your face. Mm-hmm. And if that isn't what this podcast is all about for a bonus episode, hope Angie's Boom Chicka Pop enjoys this. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed our bonus episode. We want to bring you a little extra this week. Thank you to the incredible sponsor, Angie's Boom Chicka Pop, who gave me my first opportunity in a commercial, and I genuinely love the popcorn. It's delicious, it's gluten-free, it's not gmo and it's doing the most. We will see you on the next episode of the absolutely not podcast. and on the road and on the road get your tickets at heather on tour.com we've got three shows in dc coming up and we're on the road everywhere yeah we're vermont burlington maine portland denver, denver we're Boise, going to vancouver, Idaho. vancouver, vancouver Canada. Canada. i won't be at that one unfortunately just putting that out there now but you guys can go and support a white woman okay you know what mm-hmm. and they will because my name's on the marquee anyways have a fantastic <laughs> weekend for live, now live laugh love and we'll see you on the next episode of the absolutely not podcast at reverend air chicha Bella.